This is WCNY's The Capitol Press Room, and we're turning our attention to efforts in New York to prevent the slaughter of horses, an issue that has been getting more attention as well as legislative action in recent years, in large part due to our next guest, Karen Caro Spencer, a lobbyist here at the Capitol, who's also the founder and chair of Horsepower, an equine advocacy group. Welcome to the show, Karen. Thank you so much for having me, David. Well, for starters, what does it mean to, say, slaughter a horse? And how does that compare to maybe euthanizing a horse at the end of its life or putting a racing thoroughbred down that sustains maybe a catastrophic injury on the track? Very different situations there. There's nothing humane about horse slaughter as opposed to humanely euthanizing an animal that's been injured or is too ill to carry on with their lifespan. When a horse is slaughtered and given the nature of horses, slaughter either here or abroad simply can't be done in a humane manner. They're skittish by nature. They have a heightened flight or fight instinct. So making accurate pre-slaughter stunning, a very difficult process. And as a result, that the stun gun doesn't work well on an animal who's thrashing about as opposed to cattle that are raised for consumption, horses will often endure repeated blows and remain conscious during the dismemberment. And all of this really is after a real harrowing transport to the facilities as well. Well, yeah. Why does a horse potentially end up in, say, a slaughterhouse? What are the circumstances that might lead to this? Auction houses really are the dumping ground for unwanted horses. So whether they're unwanted because they are injured or ill, which we did a bill last year to try to mitigate that as well, or someone simply can't afford them anymore, or they lose interest, oftentimes they'll be dumped at auction houses, where what happens uh, much of the time is so-called kill buyers will go and outbid people that truly want to buy a horse for themselves or their child and they will round these horses up they'll go around to different auction houses and they'll outbid potential other buyers and they will put them on a truck with no food or water they'll put stallions in with geldings and mares there will be fights will ensue They'll be on a trailer for potentially days or weeks in these conditions and then shipped off to either Canada or Mexico, where the fate that I just explained awaits them. So when it comes to, say, horse racing, there has traditionally been a lot of deference given to states to regulate, aside from recent federal action. When it comes to rules about slaughtering horses, is it the same dynamic that has previously existed with horse racing? Is a lot of this left up to individual states to come up with their own rules? And if so, what does the landscape look like in New York? Yeah, it unfortunately is a patchwork quilt of state statutes around this. So back in 2007, Congress started blocking funding of USDA inspections of horse slaughterhouses here in this country. And so without those inspections, it became illegal to sell horse meat across state lines. But because no bans exist in neighboring countries, so Mexico and Canada, Um, That kind of became the dumping ground for these unwanted horses, Um, again, with the auction houses being the supplier. We did two pieces of legislation to ban horse slaughter in New York. Uh, First, we did thoroughbreds and standard breads. There was a bill that did all horses. The legislature thought that it made much more sense to kind of take these in bite-sized pieces Uh, So we did thoroughbreds and standard breads first, 
and made that illegal. And again, just trying to shut down New York as being, you know, one of those thoroughfares that's often used to get to Canada. So make no mistake, this makes it more difficult, um, but not impossible, certainly, to circumvent New York State. Uh, last year, the governor signed our um, additional bill that included all horses. So no backyard horses either, no quarter horses, to pick a, pick a breed. And it's now just as illegal to sell or transfer a horse in New York State for the purposes of slaughter for consumption. Well, I'm curious about the enforcement of these measures, because mm -hmm. it's one thing to pass these kind of rules for the highly regulated horses in, say, the thoroughbred racing industry, where I think there's more eyes and more regulators yeah. on what happens. But those privately owned horses, what's the mechanism for ensuring compliance with the most recent law? And is there any sense of what the implementation of that law has been like uh, in less than a year? Yes. And so that's why you're seeing these two other bills that we've done. So two years ago, so eight months into the implementation timeframe of the thoroughbred and standard bread, there was an auction that was highly publicized around 44, I believe it was thoroughbreds from central New York who had been part of a very long battle uh, over an estate of a breeder who had passed away. And the family decided to ship those thoroughbreds off to auction in Unadilla, New York. And so we had heard about this. We had gotten a lot of reach out because folks had been aware of the bill that uh, Horsepower had just worked on and passed. Uh, so we got reach out and we alerted Ag and Markets and our bill sponsors alerted Ag and Markets Agency. And we were all very hopeful that, you know, given this would be, be the first time that we could kind of test implementation of this new statute, um, we were a bit dismayed to hear that um, what Ag and Markets had done at that point was call the auction house and ask them to read the new statute. The auction house refused to do so. And that was kind of the end of it. And, you know, thank God for the turnout of the industry itself. The thoroughbred industry really turned out for these horses and got into bidding wars with these kill buyers to get to make sure that none of these horses ended up on the slaughter truck. Had it not been for them, the fate was sealed for these horses. Um, one buyer then, you know, because they were outbid on a number of these horses, then went directly to the kill buyer and purchased them back. So we were both dismayed and we were further energized, I would say, to look at the implementation. And so we did two bills, one that would really ding the auction houses for attempting to sell any injured or ill equidae. So that meaning all manner of, you know, horses, uh, donkeys, mules, uh, anything that fits onto the, into that category. Um, increasing those fines from $5 per uh, animal to $1,000. And then also the bill, which would require any sale house to post these rules, new rules and regs, so nobody can feign ignorance of the law. And then to have a ag and markets representative at each of the auctions. Um, to be asking the questions where the horse is going, looking for the paperwork. Oftentimes, these kill buyers won't have the proper health records um, or health certificates um, to prove that they've, you know, that they're not taking them to um, slaughter. So it's an ongoing whack a mole battle, but we are trying to just continue to make it as difficult as possible. Um, we have been told, you know, you asked about the federal level, what other states are doing. 
when we passed the bill last year that was all horses, we got a lot of reach out from the national advocates. And they have asked um, for us to jump into the work that they're trying to do in DC because they say that the bill that we just passed here in New York is the strongest one in the nation around horse slaughter. So we are um, jumping in and being helpful where we can at the federal level, but that gets blocked year after year after year. Well, it's one thing to prohibit horse slaughter, and it's another thing to try to discourage some of the conditions that might lead someone to send a horse for slaughter. And one of the things that might prevent that is an adequate aftercare network. Mm -hmm. Is there more the state could be doing to ensure that horse owners have the resources to support uh, their horses and they don't become necessarily like a financial drain on them? Yeah, well, I can tell you that, you know, horse ownership is expensive. Right. I've ridden off and on my entire life. Um, and you have to know going in that this is not, you know, like having a, a puppy, although my <laughs> dog manages to be very expensive too. <laughs> but, but, you know, there are, I think, two kinds of owners in um, generally of horses those who, you know, board them and understand that, you know, board for a horse is generally around a thousand dollars a month and then they have shoes and they have special feed and supplements and then you have your lessons and if you're showing that horse you know you're talking several thousand dollars a month so um or you have a horse in your you know your backyard you're lucky enough to have some land and um enough property to put them on your um to put them there and not have the board bill but there's you know there's no way that you're going into this, not understanding that horses are expensive. Um, you know, with regard to um, aftercare, there's a, been a lot of focus. New York has done some really good work in focusing on the aftercare of thoroughbreds and standard breads. Um, and there's a lot of aftercare programs uh, that the state does uh, fund through some of these fines that um, you know, if somebody does get dinged, but I, yes, always we could do more. There was a movement afoot about a year or so, year and a half ago, legislatively, um, to attach a sales tax to racehorses. And one of the groups that had been working on it asked if we were supportive of such. And we said, well, sure, if that money could specifically go to the aftercare. It didn't come to fruition, unfortunately. Uh, I'd love to see that happen. But again, that's for thoroughbreds and standard breads. Well, we've been speaking with Karen Corot Spencer. She's a lobbyist here at the Capitol, who's also the founder and chair of Horsepower, an equine advocacy group. Karen, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information. Join us again for Capitol Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.